Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. With the Anambra State Governorship election just two days away, the 18 gubernatorial candidates slated to take part in the poll are leaving no stone unturned to mobilize their supporters to the polling units. The candidates are also banking on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the security agencies to ensure that the election runs smoothly and is devoid of violence. So as they set off on the last day of campaigning before the polls open on Saturday, we're now being joined by Akachuku Nwankwo, governorship candidate of the African Democratic Congress, and Dr. Odina Uzo, governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party. Both men will be talking to us about their programs for Anambra, their suitability for the job, and how they intend to galvanize their supporters on election day. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Well, okay, I can see. Chief, I Chief. I Chief Uwankwo, uh, I can see you on the screen. Very quickly, let me start with you. Why do you think that you are the best man for the job out of 18 candidates? Well, two reasons. One, the challenge of governance in Anambra State, in Anambra State, is integrity, recognition, and participation of people. I come with 15 years of serving in public, blameless, corruption free. And asserted by the number one citizen who works with me, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, bears witness to my integrity in the public. That's number one. Number two, I recognize the fact the that we must have a government. Corruption free. A government is not in place yet in Anambra State. For you to have a government, the executive must be ready to respond to rule of law. The assembly must be financially independent. The judiciary must be financially independent. The, the, the civil service must be professional and autonomous. Professional and autonomous. Please go ahead. We can hear you. And, okay, and then the people must participate. The people must be able to pull back any leader they don't want and who is misbehaving. So, ADC, my party, has agreed that the people of Anambra State must be part of this government. So, we have a set up at the local government level the Nsuko Umona Assembly. So that they will, every Umona will have a seat, a voice, and a share in the government of Anambra State. So for me, I am willing to be submit to control and get the people of Anambra State to participate and hold everybody to account. For 22 years, the people of Anambra State have experienced three political parties that have decimated their lives. Spent 6.5 trillion naira and left us with poor schools, poor roads, and people running around with styrene, big money, making noise, pushing people out of their way. They have no respect for the population. They have no humility. They play over lots in our lives. Now that we have learned civil disobedience, we have learned to sit at home. If you give us bad government and we're organized, we will sit at home. So for me, the people of Anambra State should rise and show that they are in pain. Let's get up. Here, I can't go on with your son. He's asking you, get up. I have the courage to confront this demon. Let us tomorrow put our own faith into our own hands. Nobody in Nigeria or anywhere should continue to overrun us. 
unless we are weak. They were not weak. I will know Munna, Umunna BK. I will not fall, I will not go. Let us get up as people and stop selling ourselves. That is what this election is about. We have enough money to build our roads. We have enough intellectuals to train our children. All these people going around saying that they are Genesis. It is not what the election is about. The election is about stop selling our patrimony and let us come together as people and change our lives. Right. Thank you, Chief. Sorry, I appear very angry. Passionate, perhaps. Thank you, Chief. Now my question is for Dr. Uzo of the SDP. Dr. Uzo, can you tell us how the SDP is preparing for the election on Saturday? I know you've gone far when it comes to polling agents. What other measures do you have in place? How are you going to mobilize your supporters? What will it take to induce them to come out and vote? Thank you, uh, Dr. Ruben, uh, Tundun, and Rufai. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, good morning, viewers. Um, I'm Dr. Obin Nauzo. I'm um, a businessman. I, start, I started as a teacher at Girls Secondary School of Keja in the Ala local government area. I went on to do my business. Uh, I started in, uh, with business, Goku's. And today, Goku's has gone into Goku's oils, Goku's construction, Goku's chambers, Goku's farms, Goku's engineering, Goku's group limited. I, via, I, I, I was doing my business and also via to study at the University of Lagos. I, I studied law, went to Nigerian law school okay. to do uh, to do my uh, my law degree, and then went uh, to study masters in business administration, and uh, we've uh, we've gone into a lot of things. I am a knight of Saint Gregory the Great, which is the highest honor the Pope can uh, give to anybody in the world, and uh, that talks about my integrity. Uh, in philanthropy, I've assisted a lot of people uh, in philanthropy. Uh, you talk about millions of people have given scholarships over a period of 50 years. Uh, I've uh, built schools, built churches, sent uh, priests and pastors on training and people to, on pilgrimage to Jerusalem on training. Started a small scale enterprises business for a lot of people who are doing very great and very well. Uh, built roads. Uh, I've, uh, Dr. Oza. I've uh, also assisted. I've done a lot of things. So, Old Bin Oza is a brand. And in Anambra State, we, we, we started with door to door campaign. Uh, you know, I took into cognizance what is happening in the states. Uh, I, ran, I ran for the first time as governor of Anambra State in 2003. That was against Senator Chris Ngigand and um, uh, Mr. Peter B. That was 2003. The election we had then is no election, was no election like what we're having now. At, at that time, we had fun. We could move around, get to the markets, but it's so different now. And I am somebody who is very passionate about the sanctity of life. So we make sure we don't want to endanger the lives of our people and the lives, the lives of our party members. We went door to door because what is important are the voters. Not uh, over, over one, um, uh, maybe over, 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 uh, maybe about one third. If if, if it's up to that, are uh, party card carrying members. The others are not. So you to on Saturday, November six is about election. It's about voting. So 
Mine is to focus on our people, on the voters, and then a lot of people are with me campaigning, going door to door, house to house, to talk to people, and we have also organized some uh, town hall meetings, just uh, trying to do some coded things to get across to the voters. And we've done a lot, we've achieved a lot in doing that. My philanthropy is speaking to me. You remember Social Democratic Party is uh, an old party. Uh, Dr. Shukwemeke Zife used the Social Democratic Party to win, uh, I think, uh, in, two, in 1992. <laughs> he was the governor of Anambra State on the platform of Social Democratic Party. So my party is very well known. Is the party with the white horse, and uh, we are we are making progress, working hard to ensure that uh, we have gotten across to voters. We've appealed to the voters, and the voters are definitely looking at the good works okay. I've done, okay. looking at our manifesto, okay. looking at what we have to offer okay. to Anambra okay. State, okay. are going to give us their votes. Okay, on November 6th. Dr. Obinese, th thank you so much. You've been able to you know, state your part uh, of it. Uh, real quickly, I just want to ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Akachuku, uh, what is your take as regards, you know, this uh, BVAS that INEC will be using for uh, verification uh, of, 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 of uh, voters, you know, this new BVAS technology, are you comfortable with it? You know, they had a stakeholders meeting. Do the people in your area you know, know about it? Uh, what, what is their reaction to it, if you've gotten any yet? And how is the voting going to go in your area? Are you? Is that I, for me? Yes, that's for you. That's for you. Oh, great. Now, I know, INEC knows what to do with the election. I, I, I don't really think that I should be bothering myself about INEC. There are so many people who are worried, who say APC is trying to steal the election, app guy is trying to destroy the election. There are all those stuff. But I think, I've listened to INEC, I've looked at the technology. The technology is too well thought to They should go ahead with the election. Yeah, the people should vote. I'll vote for the person they want. If they put the wrong person, we have already a process for dealing with it. We go back to it and we just refuse. Uh, uh, for me, I'm not bothered about INEC. They can do whatever they want. What is important is for people to get up and decide that this is the person that will govern them. Our people have shown, our people have shown that, that they can reject something. So let them go ahead and reject what they don't want. Uh, INEC is here. The technology is fine. I love it. It's great. Please, INEC, welcome. Do the election. Well, Dr. Uzo. <clears throat> Dr. Uzo, yeah, let me come to you, Dr. Uzo. You have a 10-point agenda that is summarized as a restoration, reconstruction, and rehabilitation. Now, what do you want to restore? What do you want to reconstruct? What do you intend to rehabilitate? And please be specific and just focus on the question that I've asked. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ruben. I, I, I am, I'm, I'm certain you were looking at uh, my 2003 manifesto. My 2021 manifesto is uh, a little different. Is a little tidied up. Is uh, more, you know, we are in another uh, phase in the country. So, for me. When you talk about my manifesto, I am talking about security. Uh, security is vital, is very important uh, in our states, considering what's happening. I know we have limited time for me to delve into everything. Health is inf important to build on existing health infrastructures and facilities and, uh, and, put, and develop more. Uh, we are talking of education, very important to improve on what we have and to also, also expand on what is there. You talk about the environment. Erosion is a menace. We have to try to uh, tidy up our environment. 
uh, you talk about uh, sports and youth development. We have a lot of uh, what it takes to assist the youth to, to get to talent and harness these talents and put, put it into the best use for the state and for the country. When you come about development of ports in, within my state, there is this Osaka deep blue sea, deep sea port in Osaka here, the local government area. It's a very deep sea connected just 18 nautical miles to the Atlantic Ocean and uh, it's over 20 meters deep. And we intend to collaborate with the federal government and investors to, to unlock this deep sea, this seaport in Osaka, local government area. It's the only natural harbor, only natural harbor in the whole of the country in Nigeria. And if it's developed and harnessed, we should have over 2 million jobs, direct and indirect jobs, to the people of Nigeria. And then you can have goods from all over the world coming straight to Osaka and Ehala. And not the fact of uh, where you have the river port in Lagos, where the goods have to get to a certain point and stop there, and then lighter ships will go and convey to the uh, Papa Wharf or Tinkan Island Wharf. So we are talking of developing this and collaborating with federal government and investors. Then you are talking of uh, roads. Roads is a normal thing. Everybody talks about roads. It's very important, particularly the agrarian areas. We are going to work on agriculture and make sure we bring in our use. We use uh, the modern technologies, mechanized farming and all that to ensure that we have sufficient for our people in Anambra State and get it across to Nigeria and possibly export. And then there are other several things we have in our manifesto. And this is geared and geared towards helping our people to ensure that we have security, we have development, we have peace, unity, progress, prosperity. You remember Anambra is the hope of Igbo land. If we get it right in Anambra, we get it right in Nigeria. So my manifesto is there. I've uh, espoused it to my people, and it's my belief that with what we have, with the visions and our missions, our people are going to give, give us votes on November 6, so we can, we can uh, get Anambra back to the great estate that it used to be. I, I don't know if I'll have much time to espouse on some of the headlines that I gave you that is in my manifesto to move Anambra to, to the next level, well, to a greater height. Just a point of correction, uh, Dr. Uzo. I wasn't quoting your 2003 manifesto. I was quoting directly from interviews that you granted this day newspaper uh, in August and also in September uh, this year, ahead of the election. Okay, turn right. on. So my question is for both okay. of you gentlemen. I think we'll start with um, Chief Mwako first and we'll go to Dr. Uzo. You both joined other frontline candidates in their Anambra election in signing a statement. There were 10 of you who signed the statement, including your good selves, that um, Namdi Kanu, the leader of IPOP, should be released and the Southeast should be demilitarized. You made certain calls there. I'd like you to expand on that since we're talking quite seriously about the threat of voter apathy, you know, increased by worries that IPOP might do, might, you know, create activities and tension to frustrate the elections. So I'd like you to expand on that joint statement. How did you reach that agreement? How did you agree on the terms that you proposed in that statement? So I'll start with you, Chief Wangpo. For me, the issue of IPOB and Indivisicalo is very, and the, and the Kano, uh, sorry, not Indivisicalo, Kano, <laughs> uh, please, is very straightforward. Uh, Kano has built an organization, IPOB, which is beyond him. And Kano today is a symbol. The movement has gone past the person you are holding in detention. The person you are holding in detention is someone who can help you manage the issues outside. There should be a tactical, a rational approach 
that enables us to have this conversation going. So what we are saying in the statement we have made is that IPOP wants good government at home. IPOP wants a relationship between the Igbo people and the Federation of Nigeria that makes every Igbo child feel that he's part of Nigeria. And in the absence of that, they want to leave Nigeria. That's Theoretically, that's what they're doing. The strategy they are using, there is an argument among the Igbos around it, among the people of uh, Anambra State around it. We are saying, instead of sticking everything on our election, let the federal government be more tactical about it. The traditional rulers, the religious leaders, all people of responsibility in Anambra State have said to them, let us be involved. Get Namdikalu out of the hole where you have put him so that we can reach him and have a conversation. Let Namdikalu call his people up. I agree with that. The issue of security, the military in the location, pressures the people much more than it pressures IPOP. So it is important that we get a balance. That is my position, and that's why I signed the document. It's a rational approach. Namdikalu is a great symbol today. Nobody can diminish it. He's standing there. His approach is arguable. But his message, his point is there. We want good government at home. We want a federation that respects all our rights. We don't want people who put all their people in one position, take over everything, and treat us like we are strangers in the federation. That's what the argument is about. It's an old discussion. And it is something that we can continue to do without shooting at each other. But IPOP has secured a space. Let's use it. All right. Uh, Dr. Uzo, I, I, I'll come back. OK. Yes. Do, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Dr. Uzo, please, could you answer the question about the joint statement that you all signed? Well, not all. Ten candidates signed. Thank you, Tundu. Thank you. Uh, the, the jo we. The uh, traditional rulers, religion leaders, archbishops, bishops, stakeholders uh, signed uh, this joint agreement that um, all of us are going to work hard to achieve peace, uh, progress in uh, our land, in Anambra State, and in ex by extension, the Southeast. It's about um, the agitations of our people, uh, a lot of people say IPOB, IPOB. I want to refer that they are used to be MASOP. And uh, it's, it's about the same thing they are talking about, is the marginalization of my people, is the, is the non-inclusiveness of uh, our people in what is happening in the government of the country. And what they are talking about is recognize us let us be part of what you're doing. If we are part of this country, there's no person who is patriotic in Nigeria or no tribe as patriotic as Iboma. If you get to any place, you, uh, after the tribe, the, the, the indigenous of that place, the next uh, group of uh, uh, tribe, the next tribe you get are the Ibos. And we get there, we invest, we, we make progress. So we are talking about getting uh, getting our people secured. How do we dialogue with federal government so that federal government, we could have like a political solution where Onyen Duna and the Kano can come out and uh, how we, uh, at the end of the day, it's about dialogue. So we are talking about dialogue, about discussions, so that our people can feel belonged in happenings within the country. If you get to, like if you have a Security Council meeting, there's no person from the Southeast. Uh, we have been talking about uh, uh, having either a service chief of this or that, and none is there. And then several other things. So it's all about agitations coming from people. Even if uh, my sub is, is, is down now, if you put down IPOB, Somebody else could come up with another name. What we resolve it is dialogue, is discussion, is inclusiveness of the tribe known as Igbo 
okay. in, in, in the country. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Dr. Ozo, thank you so much. I mean, I, I don't know if we still have more time. Okay, but we'd like to say a very big thank you to you both. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us.